Okay, there, there we go. go. I just hope it's there. Oh my god! We found it! We yes! Found it. What's up, science team? It's Space Week, so I wanted to do an experiment getting as close as we possibly can to outer space with a giant weather balloon. Over the summer, it was really hot here in LA, and so of course, to cool down, I had some ice cream. My favorite flavor, strawberry. So while I was eating this ice cream, I started to ponder something. I know that hot air rises, but that as it rises, it cools, which is why it's colder on top of a mountain than it is down at the base of the mountain. I also know that the air cools roughly 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit for every 1,000 feet in altitude, and that a weather balloon rises 1,000 feet per minute. So if I put an ice cream cone on a weather balloon, would it stay frozen or would it melt before it got to the edge of outer space? But before we send our ice cream on our high altitude mission, I wanna say thank you to our sponsor, Learning Resources, which makes learning fun. They just came out with this new toy called Beaker Creatures. So if you have kids, nieces or nephews, or younger siblings, this is the perfect toy to get them stoked on science at an early age. Clearly, I'm a super fan. I've invited over my neighbor, Cole, who's a science enthusiast, to show you how the Liquid Reactor Super Lab works. Are you ready, Cole? Yes! Perfect! First, you fill up these Erlenmeyer flasks with water. Then you drop the reactor pod into the reactor chamber. From here, you pump the reactor liquid with your hydro plungers into the reactor chamber. Watch the reactor pod chemical reaction with the water. And last, extract your beaker creature, identify them with their classification card, and hope you get one of the limited edition gold beaker creatures. We love beaker creatures! Some of the beaker creatures we got are called astrolytes from the planet Stara. So to have some tech crew that is familiar with space-like conditions, we're gonna send them up to the edge of outer space with our ice cream. All right, so this is the ice cream cone that we're using. It has a nylon uh, bolt going through there and a washer on the bottom. So this is what's gonna hold our ice cream cone in place. Now it's time to fill it up with some strawberry ice cream. Wrap it up in this guy right here and put it on dry ice. Literally put it right on top. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's like perfect. That and then just do another knot, right? Yeah, maybe it looks like an album cover. We're here on location out in desert California. We're about to launch a weather balloon. Okay, there we go. Lift yourself out of your hopper's forearm. Alright, let's move. Move quickly. Three, two, one. Oh, where she goes! We've done lots of experiments on the Nikopedia channel, but the process of launching a weather balloon was by far the most technical when it came to getting all of the calculations right in order for the weather balloon to work properly. We launched our balloon from Independence, California, which is just about four hours outside of Los Angeles, and we had perfect conditions, which is low wind and a clear sky. Once the balloon was up in the air, we tracked it with GPS for the next three hours to finally find out that it had landed 22 miles away in Death Valley. I can what explain we, everything, uh, I can explain everything. What happened? <laughs> balloon went on the other side of the mountain into Death Valley, and we are, but now it's dark, and so now we're driving through Death Valley in order to uh, recover the balloon. It could have been worse. It could have been on the mountain. We uh, we have a car right ahead of us. Teamwork. We have located via GPS where our actual payload is. So with the GoPros, the whole experiment. And now we're going on the two mile hike in order to find the actual payload. So um, let's go find that payload. 
Um, so we're just tracking this on our, our phones here. That way. Probably 10 minutes away right now. I just, I just hope it's there. Oh my God. We found it. We yes. Found it. it actually landed in a tree. Followed over here. There's the ice cream. What? It came what? down with the ice cream. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Our computer's still going. We rescued all the beaker creatures. They actually came back, all of them. A total success. I cannot believe we found this. So we launched it close to Independence, California, went up and over a mountain range, and the parachute then brought our payload all the way back down here in Death Valley, California. What a journey. What a track. Once we looked at all the data recorded from the onboard computer, we found that the ice cream cone got to a freezing temperature within 22 minutes at an altitude of 19,000 feet. This cooling trend continued to an altitude of 42,000 feet where the temperature reached a frigid negative 56 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature stayed below freezing all the way up until 97,000 feet where the weather balloon eventually popped. Now initially I thought the ice cream would partially melt from being in direct sunlight, but now we certainly know that ice cream will not melt on the way to the edge of outer space if launched from a weather balloon. But would the ice cream taste any different once it returned to Earth? I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it a simple taste test. Still tastes like strawberry ice cream. And the cone? Still a cone. Got some sand in there. <laughs> space cream? Delicious. Now we keep saying the edge of outer space because technically speaking, space starts at the Kármán line 62 miles up in the atmosphere. And if you go another 150 miles above the Kármán line, this is where the International Space Station hangs out. To make things even more interesting, although space starts at the Kármán line, this line is actually in one of the layers of our atmosphere. There is in fact another layer called the exosphere where the atmosphere gradually fades into outer space. Thank you so much for watching. Click the link below to get your own Beaker Creatures Super Lab if you have kids, nieces or nephews, or younger siblings. This is the perfect toy to get them stoked on science at an early age. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.